Thank you for listening to this special message from Pastor Kathy and Choose Life Kids. For more information about Choose Life Church, Choose Life Kids, and Dean Shropshire Ministries, go to ChooseLifePobs.com. Now prepare your heart for the Word. Hallelujah. They went to the tomb and what was there? The grave clothes, right? But no body. No body. Because Jesus has risen. Praise God. Praise God. It's a new day. It's a new day. And that's what we're celebrating during this conference, that it is a new day. A new day. But before we get in explaining the memory verse, like I always do, I want to explain to you that you are a winner. You are a winner. Say that. I am a winner. I am a winner. You know, when you get a trophy, again, what does this mean? You won. You won when you get a trophy. You won when you get a trophy. And, and because of Jesus, you don't have to be the best dressed. You don't have to have made the, the, the maximum number of points on the basketball team. You don't have to even have, have played the hardest because Jesus fought for us. Do you understand? Jesus fought for us. When he died on that cross, and you know a lot of people wear symbols of of the cross around their neck as a a necklace. But you know, I was talking to one minister years ago and he said, you know, why should we wear a symbol of the cross when we should really wear a symbol of the open tomb? Because Jesus isn't on the cross anymore, right? He's not on the cross anymore. He's not even in the tomb. The tomb is empty. And that's what we celebrate. He died on the cross, yes. A miserable, painful, painful death. Then he went to hell. And he paid the price for your sin and mine. He paid the price in hell for your sin and mine. But then, after he paid the price, you know what God said? Enough! The sound from heaven came to the depths of hell, and God said, enough. And that's when Jesus rose up and kicked the devil's butt. Now, why did he do that? He did it for you, and he did it for me. And then he went to heaven. And then he put his blood on the instruments in heaven. Because there always has to be blood to cover sin but this time it wasn't covering sin it was obliterating sin so jesus was the first person into heaven and he paved the way for you and you and you and you and you all of us to go there see he fought the battle for us he gets a trophy do you understand but on this trophy because he did it for us you know whose name is on this trophy not just jesus All of you, Noah, Ellis, every one of you, we get the trophy. We get the trophy. We get the trophy because of what Jesus did. He was our substitute. See, we should have gone to hell. We should have kicked the devil's butt. But Jesus did it for us, so we get the trophy. Turn to your neighbor and say, we win. Turn to your other neighbor and say, I'm a winner. We are a winner. We are victorious. Why? Why? Because of what Jesus did for us. Now let's put up our memory verse. As you know, today is a new day, and we're celebrating 30 years. Pastor Dean and I have been ministering 30 years. We started over at 810. How many of you went to 810? Many of you were at 810, probably when you were little, but um, we started there. And then we moved over to this beautiful building that God has blessed us with 30 years. That's a long time, 30 years. But we're celebrating that today. And as I said before, tomorrow night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday night. And so you don't want to miss any of the classes, any of the sessions on New Day. Now let's look at the memory verse, Luke 1, 78. Now this is a different translation It's in the God's Word translation, so your Bible will not read exactly like this. But it says, a new day will dawn on us from above. 
because our God is loving and merciful. Our God is loving and merciful. Wouldn't we say amen to that? Amen. That he's a loving God, right? And he's a merciful God. There is so much available on this new day. Every day is a new day with Jesus. He is so loving. God loves you. And God is merciful. That means he doesn't hold your sin against you. Jesus paid the price for all of our sin to be forgiven. And he's provided a way that when we do mess up, we go to him and we say 1 John 1, 9. We confess our sin and he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin. But today I want you to know that on that cross, that didn't represent defeat. That represented victory. A lot of people thought, oh... Your, your Messiah, your Savior is on the cross. He's dying. And you see, what's so silly about it is they had remembered, the Romans and the church leaders had remembered that Jesus said, I'm going to come out of that grave in three days. And so you know what they did? The religious leaders went to the Romans and said, we got to do something. We got to do something. He is, somebody's going to come and steal his body and say he's risen from the dead. And you know what they did? There was a process in those days where the, the Roman Pharaoh, obviously, would go over and they would check out and make sure that whoever was in there was dead. So that's what they did. They went over there. They looked in there, made sure everything was dead, that Jesus was dead. Everything was as it was supposed to be because the Jews would wrap the body in linen cloth, cover the face and put it there and put spices all around the body because they didn't do what we do today. And so the body was there. They assured the, the Roman government that it, the body was dead, that he was dead. And then what they did is they took and they rolled the stone in front of it. But to assure that nobody would get in, even though it took like, I don't know how many men to roll that stone over in the front. They took and they put this mark on the front of it that says, we have examined this grave, we have examined this tomb, and nobody can move that stone away. Or they're in danger of, by the Roman government. And to assure that his disciples didn't come and roll the stone away, they set four soldiers, four groups of soldiers, four groups of soldiers, every three hours, the soldiers would come so they wouldn't fall asleep to make sure nobody came and stole that body. They had no idea what was happening. They had no idea. And see, think back on what it would be like in hell. And Carmen has a video out there, and he's, it's being played, that is so perfect with respect to what happened in hell. Because when Jesus came to hell to pay the price... Satan thought he had won. Do you understand? Satan thought, I've got the Son of God. I've got the Son of God. But then, but then, that voice from heaven that said, enough. And picture Jesus rising up and the Bible says he took all the keys that the devil had he stripped him of his power and took those keys and then the Bible says made a show of him openly that means with all his little demons he paraded him in front of them showing I won and he lost 
He's a loser. The devil is a loser, right? Yes. He lost. He lost. And then at that point, at that point, the same power that you have in you raised Jesus from the dead. And he came up from the pit of hell. And the first thing he did was he went by the tomb, right? And who came up to him? Mary. Mary. She thought he was a gardener. He didn't look like he had looked before on the cross, right? Bleeding, nasty, holes in his hands, holes in his feet, you know, just scars and, and stuff on his face. No. No, he was all clean, no blood, no blood. He still had the holes in his hand and the scar on his, 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 um, by his ribs. But he said, don't touch me, Mary, don't touch me. And he said, I've got to go, I've got to go. And why did he have to go? He had to go put his blood in heaven. But then he came back, right? He came back for 40 days. He walked on the earth and he showed them, look. Here's the holes in my hands. Here's the holes in my feet. The scar on my side. But I'm not dead. I'm alive. I'm not dead. I'm alive. You see, Jesus, Jesus paid the price for your sin and mine. And we have victory because of Jesus. Because of Jesus, we have the victory. See, that's why 1 John 4, 4 says, Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Greater is he that's in you and me than he that's in the world. Because see, listen boys and girls, when the devil sees you, when you've made Jesus the Lord of your life, he doesn't see you, he sees Jesus. Right? The Spirit of God is on the inside of you. Now, what did the devil do to Jesus? He hated him. He hated Jesus. He thought he had him in the pit of hell. But what did Jesus do? He kicked his butt. So he hates Jesus even more. But when he sees you, what does he think? I hate you too. The devil hates you. The devil hates you. But see... When he sees you, he sees Jesus and knows and remembers that Jesus kicked his butt. And see, that's why we're winners. Because we were in Jesus when that happened. So we're winners. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm a, I'm a winner. Turn to your other neighbor and say, you're a winner too. You're a winner too. See, today is a victorious day. Today is a great, great celebration as we celebrate this victory. And see, boys and girls, we don't have to be afraid of the devil. The devil is afraid of us. Do you understand? Because when he sees Noah, he sees Jesus. He's afraid of you. Yeah. And see, Jesus kicked his butt in hell, but we have to enforce his defeat because you know a lot of kids, a lot of adults don't know. That they have power over the devil because Jesus is in them. So they say, no, devil, I'm not going to do that. No, devil, you take your sickness and disease, you take your poverty and lack, and you go. Just like Jesus did. And what does the devil have to do? He has to go. Yeah. He's a scumbag. He's defeated. But we're winners. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm a winner. See, boys and girls, victory is not about what you see or what you feel. Victory is about what we have, who's on the inside of us. There's a scripture that I want us to go over, and it's found in 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15, you can write this down. It says, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through who? Through Jesus See, listen, boys and girls, if Jesus hadn't gone to the cross, if he hadn't gone to hell, if he hadn't kicked the devil's butt, we wouldn't have victory. But because of this, we are victorious. We are victorious. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory 
through our Lord Jesus Christ. He rose again. So we don't give the enemy any place. You have to always picture the fact that Jesus kicked his butt. And you're going to say, remember, remember when he tries to put sickness and disease and poverty and lack and depression and sadness on you. You just go, remember, remember, remember those three days and three nights when the devil kicked when Jesus kicked your butt, remember, devil, remember that? Remember that? So, we walk in victory. You see, boys and girls, remember Paul and Silas when they were in prison? Remember that story? They were in prison because they were doing good. But what happened? Were they murmuring and complaining and saying, woe is me, woe is me? No, they were praising the Lord. Why? Why? Because they knew they were victorious. They knew that they were winners. Say, I'm a winner. And you know, remember what happened after the earthquake came? And after all the prisoners' chains were broken off? Paul and Silas got up and ministered to all those prisoners and the jailer. And what happened? Everybody got saved. Yes, and they all praised God. See, when the devil's trying to put stuff on you, you know what you can do? Is you can praise. You can praise and get excited because you have, you're a winner and you have the victory. Remember when Paul went to that island? He got shipwrecked and was on an island. And all those people came out, and they were kind of scary. And they thought, Paul thought, well, are they going to kill us? <laughs> but no, what, did he, what happened? They didn't. They didn't kill him. In fact, Paul went and laid hands on the chieftain of the, the island, and he got healed. And then everybody on the whole island got saved. See, you have to be confident that you're a winner. Say, I'm a winner. I'm a winner. I'm a winner. Say it like you mean it. I'm, I'm a, winner. a winner. I'm a winner. See, I'm victorious. You say that every day. Sometimes you don't feel like a winner, right? Sometimes you don't feel victorious, but we don't go by our feelings. This is a new day, a new day. And we go by what the Word of God says. God says you're a winner. You're a winner because of what Jesus did. That's why we celebrate this day. This is a great day. A great day. The people in the world, they don't understand. All they're about is chocolate and eggs and whoever heard of a bunny laying eggs. I mean, that's, that's weird. But nonetheless, that's all they think about. And we're going to have a great time at the park this afternoon. We are. And we're going to hunt Easter eggs. And that's going to be fun. But that's not the focus. Right? The focus is Jesus. The fact that he's not in that grave. And he is risen from the dead. And we serve a risen Savior. Thank you for listening, and we can't wait to see you in church again soon. Invite your friends because Choose Life Kids is the place to be.